In this episode, we're venturing into the vibrant legacy of West Indies cricket to rank the top 10 West Indies batters who've defined eras, shattered records, and captivated fans worldwide from the legendary might of Sir Vivian Richards to the sheer brilliance of Brian Lara and the explosive dynamics of Chris Gale. Mark, welcome on the show again, brother. How are you doing? Are you ready to do this top 10 greatest West Indies batters of all time video? Thanks for having me back on the show, Nabil. Yes, West Indies top 10 batsmen. It's just all opinion. So that's where the audience comes in and join the conversation. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. And before we get into our top 10, I want to let you guys know that this particular video is sponsored by MSDA's Caribbean Man Cricket Bat. Mark has just recently launched with his business. He's kind enough to sponsor this particular video. So Mark, MSDA, Caribbean Man. And you want to tell people about it, but let them know where they can purchase this. This is the MSD Caribbean Man. Very nice cricket bat. English willow. This one is two pounds, nine ounces. Oval handle. Thick edges. 39 millimeter top. 40 millimeter edge. Very good, well-balanced bat. The bat, if you want to make an impact, you, you want to hit boundaries and sixes, this is the bat for you. I use it myself. If you're interested, you can always check me out. Beautiful cricket bat, the Caribbean Man. I'll link Mark's Facebook page in the description and you'll be able to link up with him there. Mark, let's get into this video. Let the viewers know, man, what our pick number 10 is. Our number 10 batsman is going to be Gordon Grenick, right-handed opening batsman from the great partnership with Desmond Haynes at the top of the order. Average of 44.72 in test matches, 45.03 in ODIs. A Aggressive batsman, his best or most memorable innings, I should say, was 214. The Lords and West Indies was chasing 342 for victory on the final day of the second test, 1984. It's one of the most memorable, one of the more memorable innings in the West Indian cricket history, right? Because it was, again, played in a cause of winning. They just dominated Chase 340 plus. As you mentioned, he, he was just a dynamo, you know, playing with guys like Viv Richards. And I think he was always underrated in his time. Anything special about Gordon? Gordon Greenwich, Mark, that people don't know, we want to tell people about that they they might be surprised knowing. He was from Barbados, but he grew up in England. He went to England at a very young age, maybe 11 or 12, something around there. Played his cricket in England. Dynamic batsman, a 360 degrees batsman. He was all around the wicket, had all the shots. He was very vicious and any any short bowling, pull or the cut shot. But his favorite shot, the square cut, pull shot. Those are two of his main favorite shot and the drive down the ground. He hits the ball tremendously hard. A, a serious man. You know, hardly ever really smile when he was at the crease. Always let the bat do the talking. Gordon Greenwich, one of the top batsmen in West Indies cricket history. Number 10, Gordon Greenwich, one of the greats of the game, comes in at number 10. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. We want to know your top 10 as well. So drop it in the comments and love to engage with you guys further. Number nine, we've gone with Shiv Narayan Chanderpaul. What made Chanderpaul so great? Shiv Chanderpaul was like the rock of Gibraltar. Batsman who loved to bat. He would bat and bat and bat all day. That was one of his good characteristics. Always a man for the crisis. If you remember West Indies cricket, we only had Brian Lara, Ramnarish Saran, and Shivnar and Shandapal were the only three batsmen who would always, anytime West Indies in some trouble, would always stand up with Lara and put a partnership together. Shiv loved batting, had all the shots. Surprisingly with Shiv Shandapal, he can up the, the ante in any minute. At one time, he could be just grafting, batting time, and another time, he can be just as aggressive as any of the main batsmen. That's one of the beautiful things about Shivnar and Shandapal. He, know, he knew his strengths, he knew his weaknesses. All in all, a, a well Wrong the player, master of concentration, the second most runs in West Indies cricket history, 11,867 runs. He had to be a very good batsman. Shanda Paul was a remarkable West Indies batsman. The number speaks for itself 30 test match centuries to play 164 test matches over such a long period. Has to be a great player, one of the greatest batsmen in West Indies cricket history. Left handed batsman from Guyana, Ship Shanda Paul. When he came onto the scene, even in his earlier days, he was criticized of the way he batted the way he danced was he proved people wrong at every step in his career just by piling the runs on continuing to dominate in test cricket in particular averaging again 50 close to 52 in 164 test matches i was again just piling the runs on and just doing great things for west indies cricket shiv narayan chandra paul one of the greats of the game comes in as our number nine again let us know what you guys think in the comments who are we going with on number eight now man you want to let the viewers know 
What are pick number eight? We're going to go with Chris Gale, the, the universe boss. He played around the same time of Shibner and Shonda Paul and Brian Lara, batting average of 42.18 in Test Match Cricket, 37.83 in ODI Cricket, 36.20 in T20 Cricket. What more can we say about Chris Gale? One of the few batsmen to score two triple centuries for West Indies, a double century, and has numerous centuries for West Indies Cricket as well. Mainly known for his T20 game later in his career, Chris Gale was an outstanding batsman, a no-nonsense batsman. What more can I say about Chris Gale? A master of concentration, he had all the shots, more known for his big hitting. A batsman who scored two triple centuries in Test Cricket has to be a remarkable batsman, a very good batsman, to be able to make two triple centuries in Test Cricket. In addition to that, he's just such a great human being. I'm like a big fan of Chris Gale, and since my childhood days, just watching him play earlier in Test Cricket, and as you said, those two triple centuries, people don't realize how great of a of a test cricketer he was the aura he brought from what i always watched was something different than any other player yeah and let's not forget his his one day record he had the high score of 215 in a one day match as well yeah. 117 yeah. in a t20 match chris gale has to be right up there a very humble man jovial man I, I love chris gale he's down to earth on and off field he really made a big impact and represented jamaica and west indies and, and the world cricket and state and well loved in india for his IPL Pro. So number seven, we're, we're going to go with on now, Mark. Or pick number seven, we're going with Clive right. Lloyd, Lloyd. One of the greatest captains in West Indian cricket history. And hint, hint, guys, our next video will be on the greatest West Indies captains of all time. So that's a little uh, hint drop for you guys for our next video. So stay tuned and make sure to smash that like button. So Mark, Clive Lloyd, average of 46 in test cricket known for his powerful hitting again specific data is lacking on some strike rate you know, 102 memorable innings in the 1975 world cup final and winning his team the cup one of the greats of the game and a legendary legendary player for west indies man yes yeah, so the thing with clive lloyd very powerful strike of the cricket ball a man for the crisis as well He's coming at number five and number six when he walked in to the wickets it was like a different present he give you goosebumps i remember watching him young boy 1981 in st vincent and one day match west versus England. When he walked in, everybody stand. He even said the opposition clapped him. Clive Lloyd, very powerful strike of the ball. He had a cover drive. I remember back in the day, the Australians used to say, and Lloyd crashes it through the covers like a bullet from a gun. He hit the ball very hard. And he was a well-rounded player. What stand out with Clive Lloyd? He was a man for the crisis as well. Even if he was an aggressive batsman, he was a man for the crisis. Every time West Indies would need runs, majority of the time, he would stand up and put up a good partnership and bail West Indies out. Remember in England in 1976, and Clive Lloyd anytime there was a slump or collapse Clive Lloyd would just come and bat with authority and take the West Indies um, out of trouble he had 19 test match hundreds 75 105 runs also had a, a one day century a magnificent 102 um, that was the only one day century but as I said, he lead West Indies from the front on and off the field. One of the greats of West Indies cricket. And the 102 was in the 1975 World Cup final. So what moment to get that century and win the big cup. He was just one of the guys who the West Indian players look up, looked up to led from the front and made those hard runs. You know, sometimes people don't understand that having an average of 46 coming in middle order at number five or six, it, it's worth its weight in gold because the middle order is probably the hardest place to bat right? Because the ball is softer and slower bowlers on. So it takes a lot more patience for a batter to come and sometimes be aggressive. He had both those sides in his game. Clive Lloyd comes in at number seven. Let us know what you guys think on number seven and where you would fit Clive Lloyd on your list. Let us know in the comments. We're going to now go on to number six. Mark, who are we going with on number six, man? Yeah, we're going to go with Rohan Kana, one of the earliest classy elegant batsmen from West Indies. He had shot a sweep shot every time he played that sweep shot would fall on his backside. He was known for that shot. Very good batsman, 15 test match centuries. Had all the shots all around the ground. Elegant, could be aggressive when he has to, but basically easy in the eye. Was from Guyana, or I used to say British Guyana. He really made an impact in the early days. Back in the day, 
was highly rated as one of the best West Indies batsmen. And he only played 79 test matches, right? Back in the day, we didn't have that much test crickets. Playing 79 test matches back in those days was like playing 100 plus, scoring that 256 against India in 1958, one of his most memorable innings. And it's not enough strike rate data available on the guy, but he was known for a guy who was a master of reading the game and reading the game situation and gameplay, when to attack, when to defend, when to take the bowlers on. So he was a complete type of a batter who understood any type of a situation can go out anywhere really and showcase his class and temperament and his ability anything else mark about rohan Kanai? yes you got to remember back in the 50s late 50s early 60s these players played and uncovered pitches so it, it wasn't really easy to uh, maneuver batting and, and, and sticky wickets you know without covers and back in those days you have homemade umpire who, who basically most of the time were biased so for the, the home team all these things you have to really take in effect and the grounds were, were very big as well so all these things you have to really take into consideration playing in county cricket gave him a lot of great experience you know so that's why he was always able to produce for West Indies, uh, one of the key batsmen in the in the 60s for West Indies. And he comes in as number six on our list, Rohan Kanai, one of the greats of West Indian batting legacy. We're going to go on to number five now. Number five, we've gone with Sir Everton Weeks. Weeks. What made Sir Everton Weeks so great, Mark? He was a classy batsman. I saw a little flame on him. You know, I didn't have too much of a video on, on the three Ws. He was one of the three Ws, but a very classy batsman very reliable had all the shots easy in the eyes played ball and merit you know had ability to bat for a very long period and was a master of concentration he always seems to produce the runs when west indies needed just a really reconnection you know as i say he had five consecutive centuries back in 1948 but and the sixth century he was going for i think he got out for in, in the 90s was a, a great player a lovely commentator i, I enjoy his commentary when he used to do dictating in barbados what, what more can i say about so everton weeks yeah and he only played 48 test matches too. again back in those days that was about as much as test cricket that these guys could get playing on uncovered pitches as mark mentioned and averaging near 60 runs in 48 test matches it's quite amazing man and the time that these guys played and obviously the quality of bowling the big field made cricket a lot more difficult than you know compared to today's day and age where you get a good balance between bat and ball and you know the boundaries are much smaller than those times the bats are much bigger so a lot more you know easier for batters these days but these guys just had that amazing quality way ahead of their time yeah but it, let, let me just elaborate a little bit in first class cricket in the Caribbean because those days it used to be inter island you never really had the Winwood Islands and Lee what's involved yeah. he dominated the, the first class scene you know he had a, a high score of 304 36 centuries in first class cricket 15 in test match cricket as I say the average of 58.61 Everton Weeks would always remain one of the greats of West Indies cricket. Sir Everton Weeks comes in at number five. Let us know what you guys think. We're getting into our top four now. Drum roll and drop your top four. Let us know what your top four would be. Number four, Mark, who have we gone with on number four, man? George Headley, known as Atlas. That was uh, his, his nickname, uh, George Headley from Jamaica. Yeah. Test average of 60.83. You know, he only played 22 test matches for West Indies and he scored 10 centuries. That was, I think, very remarkable. 10 centuries from 22 test matches. High score of 270s, 270 against England. From all reports, he was born in, in Panama and then moved to Jamaica. They used to call him the Black Bradman. So good back in those days. And the batting, the West Indies batting really rely on him. Because back in those days, West Indies batting was not strong. Early 30s, the, the batting was not strong. So the thing really rests on his shoulders. And he, he was a remarkable batsman as well. Yeah, only 22 test matches, averaging 60.8. And that 270 not out against England in 1930. One of the great innings that's known in West Indies cricket. Again, he was known, as you said, the Black Bradman. Just for his sheer consistency, 10 test match centuries. One of the greats of the game from West Indian cricket. He was one of those early batters who set up the West Indian cricket legacy history for the batters that was to come. I would like to also yeah. add, he only played uh, 22 test matches. You know, just want to add some first class stats. He scored, his high score was 344, 33 centuries. That speaks volume as well. Back in those days, the pitches, the conditions wasn't favorable for 
for batsmen to be a stalwart back in those days, you know, basically carried a burden of West Indies cricket on his shoulders. George Headley, a great batsman, you know, only 21 90 test runs, but his test match centuries and innings speaks a great volume for West Indies cricket, a great West Indies batting hero. That conversion rate, as you mentioned, man, 10 centuries in just 22 matches, simply amazing just on those pitches, man. Sir George Headley comes in as our number four and let us know again what you guys think of this pick. Number three, we're going to go with, and it may be a bit controversial for some of some of you guys, our pick number three, we're going with Brian, Charles, Lara, and one of my personal favorites growing up, just watching this guy back was just simply mesmerizing. Just just one of the greats of the game, man, and I was just always in awe. So Mark, Brian, Charles, Lara, what made him so great, man? So Brian, Lara, 34 test match centuries, 68 half cent, average of 52.88. I mean, what more can we say about a batsman? For anyone in test match cricket to score a 375, a 400, it's, it's simply magnificent out of the ball. You know, what I like about Brad Lara was his ability to score run, find the gaps, just bat and keep bat. You could take the, way, the game away from any team in just one session. He was flamboyant. He was elegant he, you know he was easy in the eye everything i like about brian Lara as a cricketer and as a batsman when he walked to the crease he commanded respect the good thing about brian Lara, he never really spoke too too much when he was batting but if you sledge him or you walk up to him then it was on but people said he was more interested in stats but i wouldn't say that as a batsman your main job is to score runs. Brian Lara scored 11,953 runs for West Indies. Hats off to Brian Lara. It won the matches 10,405 runs. That speaks volumes as well. 19 won the centuries and 34 test match centuries. You know, if you look at his first class career, he scored 501 as his highest score. You know, so what more can you say about Brian Lara? Brian Lara, a gift really from God to West Indies cricket. He was a master and an awe-aspiring individual for the West Indies and world cricket because of his sheer ability to do certain things that he will say he could do, right? Like he could on well say that I'm going to go do this and then he would go go do it at 374 and Matthew Hayden broke that record. He said, I'm going to come back and beat that record. He called it and he called it and he came back and scored a 400 not out, right? So that just tells the fans about the greatness of the man. Probably one of the best players of spin bowling as well that I have ever seen, ever. Just the sheer footwork. People say that there's a, you know, thing about West Indian cricket. Again, we've talked about it in a prior video. There's a consensus that the batters from West Indian batters lack how to play spinners or proper spinners. You know, whenever you watch uh, Brian Charles Lara back, you think otherwise because he was just simply a master of playing spin bowling, man. You know, one of the main reasons for that, in Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago has the best set of spinners domestically in West Indies cricket in Trinidad. So Brian Lara grew up in Trinidad, practicing from a young boy um, at academies, you know, playing for Pat Patima co College as well, Trinidad domestic cricket, you know, so he was accustomed to batting spin. But that was one of the main reasons why he was such an accomplished batsman at, at, at spin. I remember Brian Lara in an interview said, you know, when you bat in spin, it doesn't matter who is it bowling, whether Mulitaran or Shane Warren. You see, once you get to the ball and the half volley, there's nothing the spin bowler could do. You know, and I always kept that in the back of my mind. Great batsman against spin and against pace. You know, hats off to Brian Lara, a master batsman. He's the se second most capped batter behind Shivnarayan Chandrapal, right? Chandrapal has played 164, I believe, test matches and uh, Lara 131 test matches. So again, the longevity, the greatness of the man, the sheer passion he brought for the game was simply amazing. So number three and one of my favorites, Brian Charles Lara. Mark, number two, man. And who are we going with on number two? Yes, I'm going to go with Sir Vivian Richards as our number two batsman. Averages and runs really never matter. You know, it was basically about the impact of the game coming out and playing a beautiful hand, putting West Indies in a winning position. That's what he was really, that was one of his main jobs, you know, as a batsman. He was an entertainer. He never really looked at the stats, to be honest with you. Viv Richards just came out and just entertained the crowd. When you see Viv Richards swagger to the crease, basically that's what you call box office. You're getting money for the value of when you see Viv Richards walk out to the crease. You know, one time Viv Richards played a match in Barbados and he played a cover driver. One of these days I'll post that video. The Bajans 
said, go out of the ground and pay their money and just come back in just because of that cover drive. Let's look at Viv Richard career stats. Um, in Test Match Cricket, 85-49 runs, best of 291. Average of 50.23. That was his average in Test Match Cricket. The 47 average was in, in ODI Cricket. Um, 11 centuries in ODI and 24 Test Match centuries. So Viv Richards, a match winner, an authoritative batsman. A man who is always up for fight would always take on the opposition bowler, Lily Thompson, or you name Pasco. Viv Richards never back down to them. I, I have seen so many remarkable innings by Viv Richards. The main thing about Viv Richards was his presence at the crease. Back in the day, we used to call him Vivi Richards. You know, as a young boy, I remember listening to West Indies in England in the 80s. That innings, 291 was in 1976 in England in the series when Tony Gregor talked about the West Indies, the West Indies cricketers and Groverin. That was a great, remarkable. If, if you if you ever, I'm not sure, Nabil, if you ever saw that innings, but you should maybe go on YouTube and, and just look at it. Pong for Pong, that was one of the best innings I ever seen from Viv Richards. I'll, I'll watch it, man. I think I've seen it. This dude just brought fear and swagger. And I think there was a story, I think, with Bussy Makram, where one time, Bussy Makram's debut series, probably against the Windy, he's going to bowl at the great Viv Richards, and he bowls him a couple of bouncers. And, you know, Servif tells him, I'm going to see you outside. So I think afterwards, he goes out and finds Wasi Makram, sends one of his guys to tell Akram, like, hey, you know, tell tell him to come outside. And Wasi Makram just runs to him, Ron Khan, to like, hey, dude, can you protect me, man? <laughs> From Serviv, he said Serviv was standing there just shirtless with a gold chain and a bat in his hand. It's one of the great stories that Wasi Makram told about the man, right? That just the players feared him and just the swagger he brought to the, to the crease and to the field to entertain everybody was simply amazing. It could, could have been number one, number two, like number two on our list at like the greatest or arguably one of the greatest number two or number one West Indian batters of all time. So that was number two and drum roll for number one, Mark. Who are we going with on number one, brother? The greatest batsman of all time was Sir Gary Sobers from Barbados. An average of 57.78. Or he had a best of 365 versus Pakistan. 26 test match centuries. And, you know, that speaks volume. You know, he started really as a, as a bowler blossom into a fantastic batsman for West Indies. You know, left-handed, he was an entertainer. Gary Sobers never worried about the stats. Gary Sobers just came out to entertain. And that's one of the good, great thing about Sir Gary Sobers. You could you could say probably the greatest cricketer of all time ever. But as a batsman, I would name him number one West Indies batsman of all time. You know, I remember seeing a video of him when he hit the six sixes of Malcolm Nash in English County Championship against Glen Morgan. That alone, you know, just it was just goosebumps, giving me goosebumps. So Gary Sobers, one of the greatest, best West Indies batsmen of all time. So Gary Sobers, my number one West Indies batsman. Wow, what a player. And number one comes on the list, guys. And that was, you know, our top 10. And if you haven't checked out our top 10 West Indies bowler video, you're going to find it on the screen here. Guys, check out Mark's page in the description. You can check out the videos he posts and as well. Check out that MSDA Caribbean Man band. Don't forget to check out our merch in the description as well. We're going to our Reverse Scoop shop where you can shop for the Reverse Scoop merch that supports youth cricket development, growing the cricket here in the USA. And yeah, check out our top 10 Wendy's Bowlers videos. And we're going to be bringing you guys top 10 all-rounders in the coming future as well as top 10 fielders and top 10 West Indian captains of all time. Thank you for watching and liking, subscribing. Mark Audain and Nabil Khan from the Reverse Scoop signing off. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.